exactly the point that's being made. That there's a difference stop. between bad four. and there's a difference between expunged. The context in which these no. words are being used, that needs to be understood. I think there it is a lack expunged. of understanding Just as far as this entire yeah, discussion issue. May I, may I complain some of my BJP party from the last 70, 80 years has been using this, these words itself. And now they have done another thing. They don't want any more protests to happen. Religious ceremonies have also been banned from happening outside the parliament. Now, please tell me, Shahzad, what problem does the BJP have with puja and part happening outside the parliament? Because whenever Ten there's seconds. an inauguration that happens, we do, Ten you know, seconds. light a lamp. And there are religious ceremonies that happen all the time. What problem did you have that you wanted to cater to a number four? Uh, the Redima, BJP part. Redima, the BJP in the interest of the people being able to hear me, me, we can they, speak one at a time. If you would allow me to come me, in. Allow me, allow Article 19 clause 1 sub clause. Redima, I don't want to make this a slanging match. People appreciate me to and articulate you things me what in a cogent manner. Please give me an opportunity to come in. The world's largest democracy does not allow its parliamentarians to speak. Redima, and what please examples let me come in. I request you. I can't, you I can't to, speak you over anybody. This is not my style of debate. Redima, I request you to allow me to come in. Do you realize by doing this, you are basically curbing freedom of speech and expression? Redima, you have to bring me in. I'm not going to make it a two-way slanging match. This is not. Important and issue. Please allow me the space to speak. Okay. Okay. The government is constituted of humans, not God. Shazad, so come in quickly and then I have to go to the other guest as well. Shazad, please. please. please not All the parties have this. Criticism back in the day, you're no different. Okay, you Ashmeet, you made your point. Shazad, quickly, I have to go to the other guests who've been patiently waiting as well. Uh, Redima, 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 please let me tell you that I do not I engage in speaking over somebody, and that's why people. Go ahead, go Ridima, ahead, Shazad, uh, finish your point. The kind of culture that my Ridima, my party and my parivar both have given me a culture to hear somebody out and then speak. And therefore, I don't indulge in a two-way cock fight. I will make my point with respect and the audiences can hear it. So let me make a few points in 30 seconds. The point I'm trying to make is, first of all, Ashpreet, the population of India in the last segment you said was 150 crores. It's 140 crores, it's not 150 crores. These fact-free arguments, sexual harassment has not been banned. There's no ban on any word. Sexual harassment actually is part of a name of a law. So it can't be banned. But yes, if you say that the armed forces went and sexually harassed the prime minister, maybe that would be expunged. But that's not the point. The point is there is no dharna ban either. If that is a dharna ban, then you have it said it in your own circular. Was that a dharna ban and a ban on religious ceremonies? And finally, please, one second. Uh, uh, can I please complete Redima? Redima, can I please complete? Complete your point, Shazad. Please. I have to go to the I request you, Redima. Please, please. Please finish your point. I understand, but I don't need to be interrupted. I don't interrupt. You do that all the time. And Redima, finally, all of these all of these words that have been used to describe us have been used in five state elections by Arshpreet and his leader Rahul Gandhi. What came out of it? Please go ahead, use them in parliament, use, out the, uh, use them outside parliament, use them on uh, TV, use them on social media. Okay. Okay. The fact is nobody buys okay. those arguments. Okay. Okay. And please we, talk we, about we the heard, emergency We've heard from close. both the spokespersons. Let me get in the other guests who've been patiently waiting, Hemant and Arun. Hemant, let me bring you in first. The larger issue today is, and this is what even a viewer must be wondering today, that why is this the priority of the opposition today? Three days ago, we saw the opposition up in arms over the size of a particular lion or how aggressive it was or whatever, the number of teeth or the stance it had taken. Then it talks about a list which, you know, they don't understand the context because it's not banned, it's only expunged. A similar list comes out it's every single year. Today also, as I said when I started the show, that a similar circular has been brought out in the past as well. Are these the issues that we really should be focusing on? Ji, first of all, let me explain it what the real issue is. These both these circular as well as these words that have been so called used, they are calling it bad. These are more of advisories if we correctly point it out. And this is not a new phenomenon in Indian democracy. First time such a list was published in parliament in 1954. Correct. Second time it was in 71. Third time it was 83. And after that, from 19 onwards, 1990 onwards, every year, almost every year, there are certain words which are added to. That is point number one as far as valuation is concerned. Once the advisory is given, it is up to you as to in which context you use that particular word, whether is it is offensive, it is slanderous or what. See, all these words, whatever, whichever they are mentioned in these advisories, I will call it, but they are, they are basically adjectives which are used in a particular reference. So if we call jhoot, jhoot is something 
in a particular reference. You just can't say that Jhoot is bad. It is up to the speaker's goodwill whether he will continue with this or he will expand it. That is point number one. Hmm. Number two, Ridhima, the real issue here that we need to discuss is debate and discussion is the soul of Parliament. Both the sides, whatever is happening for last three days, I am really shocked to see. Both the sides are lacking confidence in each other. That is the problem. What the problem should have been, the issue should have been, these advisories are regular, but there is certain way of doing it. Both sides should have hmm. sit together, yeah. given more space to each other. That is the, how a vibrant dem democracy hmm. functions. That's how Britain functions. That's how many European countries function. There are certain parliamentary etiquettes also. See, whenever you are speaking in the parliament, you are not supposed to be slanderous or, or you know, offensive or aggressive beyond a point. There are certain etiquettes. True. Now, I, but, I agree with the we... point that you're making and let me bring Arun in on this. While nobody is taking away from the fact that the right to protest or to oppose or to have a share of criticism is the job of the opposition and that's what makes a country like India and democracy extremely vibrant. But there are also certain decorums that one needs to follow as far as elected representatives are concerned. If we go back to the list yesterday, what is the harm if we're trying to make this more saner or more, you know, quote-unquote, parliamentary language? I don't see an issue with that. But do you think the larger issue today is, and this is what I was asking Shahzad also essentially, just the fact that the opposition today feels at every platform their voice is being stifled. If they're not given any platform, then where do they raise their voices? Uh, Ridima, uh, the, the first point which I want to make is, and it's a humble you know, opinion from a common citizen, you can say, that the larger problem is not what you have mentioned. That is a problem. But I think even the larger problem, which I have seen over the last three, four days, and which has been, and is cutting across party lines that people, uh, when an issue comes up, they just Google it. And because the Google stops at 2009, uh, in terms of giving you information up to 2009 on this issue, the protest issue, the dharna issue. So you only talk about that. But I want to take you back. Actually, I think the level of the debate and the way issues are taken up and uh, the reason, the rationale behind, uh, you know, taking up the issues. It's largely basically there's a lot of lack of research and uh, you know evidence-based arguments. So I my uh, hope is you know cutting across political parties, uh, people you know spend less time on Google and do a little bit of more hardcore research. And I want to bring in one quick point. This whole episode started not in 2009 in terms of banning dharnas or in 1964 uh, the CPM MP A K Gopalan he sought permission to hold a one-day hunger strike in the lobby of parliament to protest food shortage in his home state, Kerala. However, the Speaker of the House ruled, and I am quoting from that, the lobbies or any part of this parliament is not intended for any such demonstrations, strikes or fasts. Earlier also, I had not allowed it at any time, and this time also, I cannot permit that. The same incident happened in 1972 okay. when, a, when a member of parliament hmm. from Bihar tried to do the same thing. Now, last thing which I want to say is, leave apart, you know, uh, but is, what has been published in the parliamentary book bulletins. There is a book published by the Lok Sabha Secretariat, directions by the speaker under the rules of procedure and mm. conduct of business in Lok Sabha. If you go to rule number 124A, it categorically states that the demonstrations, all this cannot be. Okay. This is a I, I, I take the 